Hello and welcome back to The Simplicity Diaries with me, Kim John Payne. This week I wanted to uh, address uh, a situation that comes up for so many of us as parents is when a situation starts escalating and you can you can feel it's escalating and you need to actually do a quick and hopefully easy pause. Uh, you need to just not go there. You need to not go with the escalation. There are many, uh, many ways to do this. And I talk about these a bunch of different ways in, in my book, Being at Your Best When Kids Are at Their Worst. But I wanted to talk about one in particular um, that can be used when kids are, are nagging. They're coming back and they're back and back and they're nagging, 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 or they're interrupting. You're trying to talk with someone or get, or get something done and they're, they're just kind of just boomeranging back and just won't, and just uh, are, are um, causing you to feel that, that the, 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 as one mum put it, the red mists are rising. You know, <laughs> I'd never heard that term before, but when that mum said it to me years ago, I knew exactly what she meant. So what to do when, when you feel those waves of, of um, frustration start to, start to rise? So one of the things to, to recognize is, is that, of course, you know, the early warning signs in your own body. Uh, it's usually that tells us pretty early what's happening. Um, tells us, uh, uh, gives us like an early warning sign. So to understand that, oh gosh, this is so frustrating. That's the, the feeling of it. But you can feel your shoulders tense. You can feel your throat clench. You can feel your abdomen tighten. You can, we all have various little warning signs. And my first suggestion is to pay attention to those, to really pay attention that when that's happening, notice it. Now, I know this might sound awfully basic, but just, but first of all, notice what your body is, is telling you. Now, if that, if that's, you know, not your kind of thing, it's okay. Uh, but still notice that you're getting frustrated climb the stairs to your balcony and look down on the dance floor and go, whoa, okay, that's really happening. My, my child is, is nagging more and more, is coming back and, and is relentless and won't stop. And just and notice that, that I'm getting really frustrated with this. So, and I talk about that a lot in that book I mentioned of getting to the balcony uh, is one of the first steps just to notice what it is that's going on inside us. Now, with that said, uh, e even if that's difficult to do, and it is <laughs> difficult to do, I'm going to suggest that when a child is nagging, one of the, what they're looking for is both boundary, a boundary and a connection, both. Because a boundary has a child feel safe because they know you know where they stand and a connection is often what they're looking for when they're nagging and nagging and nagging like that so i'm going to suggest a boundary and a connection that is super simple and quick to do the first thing if your child is nagging and coming back and back and back or interrupting conversations and nagging that they want something in whatever form is just to simply hold hold your hand up in that in that universal in that universal stop stop show them your palm just stop and 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 you can you give them a little a, a little look but stop and you say to them stop please no no, no, stop. And just, that's it, stop. And, and ground yourself when you do it. Mean it, uh, be, be sure about it, it's just stop. And then 
Having done that, that stop, then gather. Move your hand around and draw the child. Mostly they'll, they'll allow this to happen, kids. So first of all, stop with your hand, then round your hand and put it on their shoulder, you know, if they'll let you, uh, and most will, like I said, and just bring them in close to you. Just bring them in and let them lean against you. Now, even if they're a bit older and they don't lean against you anymore, just put your hand on their shoulder and, and just give their shoulder a little squeeze. Run your hand over their scapula a little bit and just, and, and, and just, just, whoa, stop and now gather. Stop and gather, but gather them in. Gather them in. Let them be with you and connect with you on a body base level, not on a word base level. If they're, if they're nagging and nagging and nagging to get, if you engage too often with them on a, on a verbal level, then the, what, you're, what you're doing is that you're buying into already um, very often an elevated method of communication. They're already elevated. And so to sort of be able to connect with them, but not get involved in that verbal stuff where we end up justifying ourselves or, or, or uh, arguing back or because it's just who wants to argue with a kid? You know, they're just children. We we don't want to be arguing with them. And we all know that. But they are they are in need of connection. But the connection can be body language, not verbal language. So the first body language is just stop, stop. The next is collect and gather them, gather them in and let the little ones will just be with you and lean against you. Um, the older ones, you might just need to stroke, as I said, you know, just stroke their, their shoulder blades or their shoulder and just... And the third, and, and it's the, the you know, simple, because uh, uh, if you do that, this happens organically, is breathe. Just, and as you breathe, just run your hand down their shoulder, just down their scapula. Run your hand down their trapezius, down their shoulder, down their upper arm. You don't need to go any lower in their body than that, but just down their upper arm down their shoulder and maybe do it two or three times. <sighs> and then, and then now you can, you can say, oh my goodness. And the and then is, is just to connect with them. Oh my, something's going wrong. Something's hard. Something's not working out, is it? Oh. and just have a moment so what you've done is stop gather breathe and then connect with them but not about what is it that you want tell me everything that's bugging you it's just it's just an empathetic recognition that something feels bad it's like yeah for an older one you might say all right this is something's frustrating, right? Or for a younger, younger one, just rubbing their shoulder, squeezing their arm, their upper arm, just giving them a hand squeeze. Oh, something's gone wrong, hasn't it, love? Something's really gone wrong. So you're not actually inviting them to tell you everything about it, not yet. You're giving yourself that vital five, six, maybe even 10 seconds that you've got to shift, to sh shift the trajectory just that little bit, to settle yourself just that little bit. Settle it down, create a space, and then, and then be able to connect with them and work through the problem. Now, what is it, love? What is it? What is bothering you so much? Then what we've done in that five, 10 seconds is we've connected with a, 
with the child to be sure that's that's happened you're giving them a little hand hug you've drawn them close you're not rejecting them you're not saying would you please just stop no stop now stop right now look i cannot hear any more of this would you please and it, you know how that who hasn't let the parent cast the first stone who hasn't been in that place today <laughs> but you can say stop with your hand stop put the hand up stop gather breathe and then connect connect on that verb now go to the verbal something's not working out oh dear all right okay now this is is of, of course helpful for most kids it breaks the um it breaks the verbal uh, very often they'll stop talking just for that you know three five ten seconds they'll stop with the with the talking you're modeling emotional self-regulation and that's huge that you're modeling taking a breath and you're modeling bringing in like i'm here for you i'm here but you're also at the same time showing them that there is another way to do this and if you do it enough what what a lot of parents tell me who get pretty practiced at this stop gather breathe that get like it becomes second nature stop gather breathe is that that's that's enough time you know to be able to do what that famous thing is like count to three you know count to ten but if we just count to ten and our child's standing there glaring at us and they're still going at us verbally I need you to pay attention now, Mum. I want to. I need to know now because, Mum, I need Dad. I need to know. And, and you know, for little kids, when they're into that kind of that kind of voice, um, if if we're just standing there, count, like closing our eyes, counting to three, uh, counting to ten, it's not dealing with a child's need for connection. Is it dealing with our need to have a pause? maybe we can do it through the barrage of, of of repeated words but it's doing nothing virtually nothing for the child because <clears throat> they're still in in this kind of they've got caught up in that handful of repeated words that they're saying over and over and over and there's few things as annoying as nagging like that by by using s stop just stop. No, no. Mm -mm. Stop. Gather. Breathe. What we've done is that we've broken the child, or at least shifted the child out. We've broken them out of that of that cycle of of barrage of repeated words. And as long as you, if you gather them in, and they're still repeating the words take two or three more breaths take longer just to massage their shoulder just just give them a squeezy if you can some kids don't want to be touched most kids are okay and you can coach them up to do this um, just be and, and just on their upper arm just give them a little a, a little hug what you've done for them is also shifted the communication you, you've shifted it. I want to emphasize this. You've shifted it from a very narrow band of, of, of needling words into a wide aperture, a wide band of loving body language connection. And the breath out, <clears throat> what that's doing is that you're going down because they were going up like the vo their voice was mum 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 dad and their voice is up and they're losing it and they're literally getting out of themselves they're going up by by stop gather and then breathe out go down 
down as this last crucial piece in this, what you're doing is counterbalancing the whole gestalt, the whole gesture of them going up and out. You're coming into yourself and down. So the stop and gather, breathe and down. Stop, gather, down. And as much as we can remember this, <clears throat> our kids start to become sort of practiced at it. And they'll realize that when they get into that cycle, and they don't like to be in that cycle, they really don't like it. it it's, it's worse for them <laughs> than it is for us, believe it or not. But they've got into that way of, of a habit of getting our attention. Even if it's negative attention, they're getting our attention for doing that. What this is doing is giving them not so much attention, but it's giving them presence and it's giving them connection. Stop, gather them in, breathe down. Stop, gather down. <laughs> okay, I sure hope that was helpful and happy practicing later today. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye for now.